what we may have to do is to acknowledge that some things are actually subjective. Science is great. For those of us living in more favored parts of the world, it has provided abundant food, computers, comforts, and safety from various harms. In a world where the value of religion seems to be fading, it is tempting to replace old beliefs with a belief in science and increasingly technology. It seems like any objective you name, people think technology will attain it. Imagine if they made creative technology, for instance. What even is the point of life at this point? Will we have AI raise our kids because it is too hard for us to do? Yet working in science reveals a very different reality. It is a mundane affair, driven by personal interests, and we scientists are human. We really don't know what we're doing at all. I work in an AI lab, and I see science and technology as not that serious. Many of my scientist friends express frustrations at colleagues who fanatically believe in the word of science as absolute truth. The AI field is intimidating for us as artists, but it has many flaws. In this video, we're going to dive deep into the curse of objectivity and why AI isn't going to replace creative types. Let's go. Part 1. The State of Things in AI There's a problem with the way things are set up in AI research. I say this as someone who works in AI research myself. Any work we produce has to be compared to other people's work on a benchmark. A benchmark is a set of tasks which our model should be able to perform as well or better than all the others. Increasingly, these benchmarks are becoming an obsession. Other criteria, like the work being uncommon, interesting, innovating, begin to matter less and less. So much time is spent on making models targeted specifically for the benchmarks. And the problem with this is that existing methods are already adapted to the benchmark by years of tinkering. Thus, many new methods that could be promising are being eclipsed because the existing ones are already so well optimized for the benchmarks. This creates an environment where risk is not rewarded at all, while mindlessly looking for little tricks to exploit the benchmarks is the pinnacle of AI research. Now, in a recent video, I went into a cool website called Pick Breeder that allows you to evolve images through a process similar to Darwinian evolution. In Pick Breeder, it feels very frustrating when you try to guide the evolution process to reach a predetermined image because you start to notice patterns in how the mutations work that stop you from getting to your desired image. But then, at random, a mutation will present you with an image that goes in a completely different direction but looks super nice. And by following that accidental direction, you finally get to a cool image, a creative outcome. So in order to make a cool image, you should not be looking to create a specific thing. In other words, to achieve your highest, non-immediate goals, you have to be willing to abandon them. But this is completely ignored by the concept of benchmarks. So more and more, AI research begins to have as its sole purpose to improve scores on a benchmark. Those who know a bit about AI might know about algorithms such as evolutionary algorithms or generative adversarial networks and wonder if those could be turned creative but increasingly they're being abandoned in favor of diffusion models and transformer models for the sole reason that they do not improve over the benchmarks. Part 2. There can be no evidence of creativity. Now, why can't researchers just come up with a benchmark that measures creativity and play their game a competition on that benchmark? Surely, that would lead us to produce creative AI, right? But the problem is that obviously creativity doesn't fit within a number. Creativity is different because it changes our perception. It isn't an answer to an existing, well-framed problem that you can put into a computer. And even worse for anyone trying to come up with a benchmark for creativity, because creativity goes even further than just solving a problem that has not been posed. It would be pretty arrogant to think that we've arrived at the truth about creativity. We cannot define it by definition. If you do, if you settle it, you stop being creative. Creativity always evades our attempts at grasping its nature. Given this, how can the way modern science is set up lead to anything but failure? I'm pretty sure it can't, and that's great news for us artists. One of the creators of the pig breeder thing I mentioned from last video, Dr. Kenneth Stanley, has a great passage about this in an answer to a question at a conference, and check it out. Um, how would you evaluate whether something is creative? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really good question, um, and um, it's it's really hard. Uh, and actually, it 
it's one of the obstacles that we face towards creating systems like the type that I'm advocating because they're so hard to evaluate. Um, and that actually causes us to not want to create those systems because we've created a culture in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning where everything has to be evaluated in order for us to make progress, right? So like I can't submit it to a conference if I don't have a very, very concrete evaluation metric that's very objective. Part three, soulless science grasping at the soul. A while back, there were a bunch of experiments where researchers asked various experts to come up with creative ideas on the spot about their domains, and then gave ChatGPT the same prompts. A qualified jury in these kinds of studies usually is to judge which ones were the most creative without knowing where ideas came from, either ChatGPT or humans. And reliably, in those experiments, ChatGPT is more creative and quicker than humans. Now. I talk to ChatGPT every day for my job, and it definitely is not creative in the deep sense of the word. So what's going on there? Why does it keep defeating humans at creativity in research papers? As artists, our opinions on creativity are at the core of our approach to art. Each of us will have a different feeling about it. I love to learn from you guys, the audience, as it helps us all in our effort to gain stability as artists facing the AI threats. So if you'd like, and in particular if you're an artist, let me know your definition of creativity in the comments. Where does your feeling about creativity come from? Do you agree with science about creativity? All right, moving on. In the past, people believed that creativity was something you were born with. It was viewed like magic. We don't know how it works, and you either have it or you don't. That was the idea. I think that opinion on creativity was too grave and too restrictive, but at least it acknowledged the mysterious aspect of it, the uncontrolled aspect of it. On the other hand, what we've done in modern times is to try and define and control creativity. But by trying to do so, we lost its very nature. Thanks to science, creativity is now something that can be unlocked by choosing the right color for the walls in your house, by reciting affirmations at yourself in the mirror, by gardening, by meditating for five minutes. It has become a silly pop culture thing. You apply a method and reliably you get creativity. And that's why machines seem to be more creative than us, because we've made creativity into a mechanical process. Most of you in the audience who are artists have always felt some level of disgust at seeing scientists trying to figure out how creativity works and devise methods to attain it reliably. Hopefully now, you know your disgust is completely justified. And listening to your disgust will save you from AI because scientists don't understand creativity the way you do, in a visceral, almost religious way. They will never be able to teach it to their machines. So we've established that science's obsession with evidence, proof, numbers, and in particular, benchmarks, means it cannot tackle the subjective and understand the nature of the creative. The rare AI researchers who are open-minded enough feel trapped by the way modern science is set up. And I hope that this video served as some sort of reassurance to those artists who were scared of the next big thing in AI. Although, should we relax and stop trying to outrun the AI? Is it not a very resilient field that always surprises us? After all, we wouldn't have expected AI art three years ago. In particular, going back to Dr. Kenneth Stanley, the creator of Pig Breeder, he spent two years at OpenAI working specifically on creative AI. Since OpenAI are well known for hiding secrets and not being open at all, we cannot know if he stumbled upon any new insights in its time there. Do they have something in the pipeline that'll take us by surprise? We can never know until it's there. But I'll be on the lookout for new information, and I'll let you guys know on the Artpost AI channel whenever I find something useful to artists. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing. And lastly, I'd love to know your opinion on modern science. Are you frustrated? and disgusted as a lot of artists are. If you're religious, what is your outlook on creativity? I'm curious. Let me know down in the comments. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. In the quiet of the studio My brushes lay at rest The screens go bright into the night Putting talent to the test Once my colors blend The silence whispers, he's taken control, farewell to the stroke.